Have you seen products like this in the store? Keto friendly gummy bears. Here's the problem with these. And we're not just picking on one particular company, but take a look at just some of the ingredients in here. Soluble corn fiber, allulose, pectin, citric acid, sodium citrate, natural flavors, palm oil, coconut oil, and more. Here's the worst part about these. 42 total carbohydrates in this little tiny pouch. Don't buy these. Today, we're going to show you how to make your own keto-friendly gummy bears. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we make a fun recipe like Keto Care Bears, you'll be alerted to it. So we've all seen products like this, and again, we're not picking on one company. No, there's this company, there's Smart Sweet. There's a company that Anthony and I actually reviewed in the Keto Box. And the problem with pretty much all of them is the number one ingredient is soluble corn fiber. And the problem is, is a lot of us, our body at least partially digests that. And they're using it as a sweetener. We call it the fiber game. Lots of total carbohydrates. And as a matter of fact, our good friend Autumn over on Watch Autumn Keto a couple years ago actually did a glucose test yes, she did. with uh, one of them. I believe it was Smart Sweets. I'll leave a link for that video right up here. Skyrocketing. Her glucose went sky high. And we don't want that. The whole idea is keep our glucose low when on keto. So don't buy these. We're going to show you how to make your own keto-friendly gummy bears that are shelf-stable, quote, and there's zero sugar alcohols cool in them. How cool is that? Now, I like to call these electrolyte gummies, but Rachel likes to call them... Keto Care Bears. Why are we calling them Care Bears? Well, because normally we don't want our candy to do anything, or we don't at least expect it to do anything, right? Mm -hmm. It's just candy, and we eat it for enjoyment, but we really wanted to have some gummy bears that did a job. Yep. And these ones are gonna help you and your children get your electrolytes in. Yeah, now here's the thing, you don't even have to make them electrolytes, but we really like them with electrolytes. Why not? And we're also gonna show you how you can use sugar alcohols if you're okay with them. But here's what we found is when we use sugar alcohols, when we kept every other ingredient the same, the sugar alcohols actually affected the texture. And in my personal opinion, not in a good way. So we have this one here that's made with a sugar alcohol and you can see it's really squishy. And for me, I don't get that gummy bear texture that I'm used to. Then we have another one that actually has uh, just acacia fiber with no sugar alcohols and you can see how it's much firmer. Then we have another one where we actually add even more of an acacia fiber, which we'll talk about in a minute and it's even gummier. And then finally one where we add a little bit more, again, no sugar alcohols, and it really gives me the texture that I remember when it came to having regular gummy bears. Yeah, I think gummy bear texture is key. So here's the thing, we are going to use a fiber, but we're gonna use something called acacia gum, which is actually how the original gummy bears were first formulated before they started using gelatin. And acacia fiber is not being used as a sweetener. This is actually a good fiber, and we talk about on a lot of our videos, knowing your ingredients. There are a lot of health benefits to acacia fiber. It's also called gum acacia, acacia gum, Senegal fiber. They're all the same thing, but they do things like it's found to lower your cholesterol, help with your glucose. It's a great prebiotic, lots of health benefits. So I'm gonna leave a link for a couple of articles down below for that. Let's get into the ingredients that we're going to need. And there's only a couple of main ingredients. And then after that, uh, there's a bunch of optional ingredients. Right. So the main ingredient, the first thing we're going to need is 
two cups of water. This is not negotiable. And now there is gonna be a link for our recipe card down below and all of this is written on the recipe card. And like I said, you don't even have to make this keto electrolyte. You could use things like Mio or something like that or even brewed teas. The key is gonna be two cups of liquid, but it's really important that you start off with the two cups of water or if you're gonna use Mio or something like that for maybe your kids or your grandkids, you have two cups of total liquid. After that, we're going to need some beef gelatin. Now I tried this with like the Knox gelatin, which is actually from pork. It works better with beef gelatin. Go ahead and get beef gelatin. I'm gonna leave a link for all of the ingredients that we use. This is my favorite brand and this happens to be like pasture raised. So it's a little bit better quality and it's actually one of the cheaper ones out there. Yeah. Key is, Buy in bulk. Don't buy little ones. When you buy in bulk, you save a tremendous amount of money. Next thing we're going to need is some acacia fiber or Senegal fiber. They're all the same thing. And again, I tried a lot of different brands and they all work, but some of them were harder to work with than others. Right. For example, I tried the Anthony's and I really, really struggled with it. So I narrowed it down to my two favorite. This was my absolute favorite. And it turns out, it was the cheapest one. Again, link is in the recipe Don't you card. love when that happens? As well as down below. So we're gonna need that. Now we're gonna get into, oh wait, we have one more mandatory ingredient to make them electrolyte gummies, and that is some electrolytes. And I've tried it with a couple different things. The two that really work the best is Redmond Relight and Element. We have links for both of these down below. You can get a free sample pack of Element. All you gotta do is pay $5 for shipping. You get eight different flavors. And we have a 15% off coupon for Redmond. All you gotta do is use the code 2 Crazy Ketos. Use the link down below. Both have similar ingredients. We tend to prefer Redmond. Yeah. But both of them work. And here's the thing. They actually have an ingredient in here that will make it so that you don't have to go buy another ingredient. Right. So we're gonna need that. After that, everything is optional. So What's optional? let's say you want to up the flavor a little bit. Maybe... You're using Redmond Relight Watermelon and you want to add some grape flavor into it. Oh, why? Go ahead and use you some candy flavorings. That. You don't need a lot, like a quarter of a teaspoon. This one is really good. I got this one on Amazon. And again, the key is buy the bigger batches because they sell them in little drams. You're going to pay like 4 or $5, whereas this big bottle was $9 and you get like a lot Does more. Does anyone want that much grape flavoring in their life? You could also use something like OOO flavors. Like for talking. example, both companies, you can use like the raspberry salt from Element, add some raspberry OOO flavors. The sky's the limit. You yeah. can even use unflavored Redmond and then add in one of these candy flavors to give whatever flavor you want. For example... Cotton candy. candy. I'm down with that. Okay, next thing we're going to need, and again, this is an optional ingredient, and that is citric acid. So citric acid does two things. Number one, it's a preservative. Number two, it gives your gummies that little bite. But if you're using Redmond Relight or you're using Element, you don't even need this because got it. it has citric acid in it. Now, if you want to up the bite a little bit more, you're going to use a quarter of a teaspoon. Don't use more than that, otherwise you affect the texture. And especially if you're in a humid climate, you really don't want to put it on the outside because it draws in water and makes them sticky and slimy as they're out in the element. Now, are you going to add it right to it dry like that or don't you have to burn no, it? No, no, we're going to add yeah. that dry. Okay, then we need a sweetener. Now, we told you zero sugar alcohols. There's a little bit of sweetener in the Redmond, but you might want to up the sweetness a little bit. We prefer liquid sucralose, but some people don't like liquid sucralose. Yeah. You can also use liquid stevia or even liquid monk fruit. We're just out of liquid monk fruit. If you don't want to use that and you are okay with sugar alcohols, you can use either straight allulose or our keto corn syrup. I will leave a link for that right up over my head. But as I said earlier, it affects the texture. One of the reasons we decided to go away from that is not only the texture, but also we're trying to keep the total carbs down because we're going to assume that everybody else is like us and you're going to want to eat the, the entire batch. batch in one sitting. That's, you probably won't. We are finding that we're not, do. but 
we want you to be able to have a low total carb even if you eat the entire batch. I want everybody to be able to take an entire batch to the movies if they want to and eat them all. Now we do have a secret ingredient. We're gonna get into a little bit of science here. Science. I'm not gonna explain the science. We're gonna leave that for Chris Bear. We're gonna use some potassium sorbate. And this is the one that you're going to mix up. Okay. So potassium sorbate is a preservative. It is considered safe and you're not going to use a lot. Leave a link for it down below. This is from Modernist Pantry. You can get it on Amazon. It's a bit expensive at $9, but this is gonna last you forever because you're not using this. You're going to actually mix it with water at one to three. So for example, one tablespoon of this to three tablespoons of water. You can mix it up in a mason jar. And from there, you just keep it on your shelf and you don't need a lot for the entire recipe. You only need a quarter of a teaspoon. So it's going to last you a long time. And this is gonna be the thing that's going to make them shelf stable so you don't start developing a whole lot of mold and mildew on them. It is optional, but again, it depends on how long you're gonna keep them around. Yeah. Now, I did wanna say, shelf stable. Shelf stable is going to be where do you live? Now, adding the potassium sorbate and having the citric acid will make it so they don't develop a whole bunch of mold and mildew and preserve them longer. But if you're like us and you live in a really hot, humid Super climate, hot and humid here, leaving them out on the counter will make them sticky because of the humidity. And again, we're gonna be working with beef gelatin and so they could get sticky. So for us, we're gonna store them in the refrigerator. But what yeah. we do is we store them in the refrigerator in a mason jar, and we add in these decedent packets and that helps absorb all the moisture. Also a little note, a lot of people don't know, these are actually rechargeable. So if they get full of water absorbing the moisture that's in your mason jar, go ahead and you could stick them in the microwave for a few seconds. That will dry them out. How cool And then you could that? reuse them. But I just buy them on Amazon. These are the little They're ones cheap. here. They're not very expensive. And again, because you could recharge them, they'll last you a long time. And you can get this really big bag, which will Whoa, really absorb a lot of water and just put it in the jar with your gummies. And then the last optional ingredient is going to be some food coloring. And it depends. Do you want them to be all pretty like this? Yeah. Or do you just want them functional? Personally, they're only colorful for the video. When we're making them for ourselves, there's no color in there. The only reason we actually had a bunch of different colors we is test batches we were way. testing batches like this had this and we knew exactly which color had what. But if it. you're gifting them to somebody or you're making them for like kids, nieces, nephews, that sort of thing, grandbabies, I would probably do it just to make it fun. Yep. Now we do need a couple of utensils. First, we're going to need a pot and you want to have one that's wide if possible. Then we're going to need some gummy bear molds. Get the big ones. So I tested this with little ones and big ones, and I'm telling you, I found that the big ones give a better texture. Size matters. I will leave a link for these down below. Um, now these are a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones, but I think they're better quality. They are a larger bear. Yeah. You get a better texture, but also what I liked about this one is it does come with a dropper. Uh, but I don't like using the dropper because the dropper introduces air bubbles. Which is not what we want. It also comes with a silicone cup that you can kind of flex and it allows you to fill up all the gummies. I really like this. So again, link for these are down below. They're super cute. And then what we're going to need is some kind of a strainer in case you do get air bubbles in. That's going to help you get all the air bubbles out. Yay. So let's do this. Let's put all the stuff away and get going. Okay, now you may notice there's a little bit of a lighting change. That's because we had an issue with the recording. <laughs> we had to stop and redo things, and then we ran out of time because I had to leave for my game. So the first half that you just saw... Was daytime. Was daytime. Now it's nighttime. Also, I forgot to mention, this really is a super easy recipe to make. How easy is it? It is so easy. Even Rachel can do it. I hope so. Except for, once again, just like the ghee, this one's going to take some time no. and patience. I don't do well with patience things. Are you ready to get started? Yes. Okay, so we're going to take our pot, and again, you want to have one that's wide if possible. The reason is, is we're gonna sprinkle things across the top and the more surface area you have, the easier this is going to be. So the first thing we're gonna do is pour two cups of water in here. You want it cold. So it could be room temperature, but don't let it be hot and make sure you don't have your burner on yet. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 
are acacia fiber. And again, there's lots of health benefits to acacia fiber. Take a look at some of the articles we have linked down below. Now the acacia fiber, which is also known as gum acacia or Senegal fiber, is gonna add that chewiness to the gummy that's like gonna that. remind you of the old fashioned gummy bears. So we've tried this with a lot of different amounts. We settled on four tablespoons. If you want a little bit less chewier gummy, use three tablespoons. I wouldn't go lower than that. If you want a much more chewy gummy bear, which is really the one that I like the most, go with five tablespoons. But in an effort to keep down total carbs, we settled on four, but again, you could make it the way you want. So now this becomes a real gum. And we've tried a lot of different brands. So use the brands that we have linked down below. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna gently sprinkle this. Not dump it. Don't dump it because that's gonna make this a pain to do. You're gonna gently sprinkle it across the entire surface of the water. Now what you're gonna see is it's immediately gonna start like kind of forming like a gel-like substance. You can do the whole thing. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and mix it. Now the one thing about acacia fiber is as you begin to stir, if you use a whisk, it's gonna create a lot of foam and we don't want foam. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a little spatula and we're gonna gently try to mix this in and that's going to allow it to all dissolve. Because but it wants to stay together. You don't want to do this really vigorously, otherwise you're gonna create a whole bunch of foam. So once everything gets all mixed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it sit for about, I don't know, three to five minutes just to make sure it absorbs all the water. So after you've let it sit for a few minutes, you may notice down in the bottom, there is still a little bit of stuff sitting around in there. Just go ahead and give it a gentle stir to just kind of mix it in. But if it's it like doesn't get fully absorbed, don't worry about it too much, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our beef gelatin. Now, we're using six tablespoons of beef gelatin. Again, link for the recipe card is down below and we have all of the metrics in there as well. Now, this is one of the reasons you wanna have a wide pot if you have one, because you're looking for a lot of surface area. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, again, gently sprinkle this, I will stir it as you're doing this, across the top, you wanna get a very thin layer. That's you wanna good. try to not clump it because if you clump it, you're gonna have some of it that, like, like that, you're clumping it there. <laughs> you can go ahead and try to get the whole surface area covered. And if you clump it, it's gonna be that much harder, like just like that, we, we wanna try to avoid that. <laughs> so, because we're using six tablespoons, you don't wanna dump the whole thing in at once. No. Because then you're gonna really get clumped. So what I like to do is go one to two tablespoons at a time, go ahead, mix it up a little bit without adding a whole bunch of air bubbles. See how like that is just not absorbing any water. Isn't that hilarious? So we do one to two tablespoons at a time, but what happens is I tend to lose count. Okay. So the best way measure to do that, it measure it out into a separate container and then you know you have that whole container. This is what I'm talking about, time and patience. Okay. You don't wanna just dump it in there because you're gonna have a big gelatinous mess. So what we're gonna do is try to get some water onto that beef gelatin. And if you do get a clump, don't worry about it. Don't what panic. you're gonna do, don't panic. What we do is we either take our little spatula, press down to the bottom, or pull it over to one edge and just try to kind of like break up the clumps. If you get a bunch stuck on the side, don't worry about it because I'm gonna show you how to get all that off and not lose any of that beef gelatin. I love the fact that because you're married to me, you have to know how to fix things after it gets broken. That's true. I just have to have patience. Yes. And not be like, these blooming gummy bears. Now again, it may look like it's taking us a long time, but again, we're trying to film it. Yeah. So it takes a little bit longer. Usually this is just like a one or two minute process for me. Like that? Yeah, the biggest key is don't get a big clump in once. Like, don't just dump it in the top. Like we started. Because, again, when you do that, you're just, what happens is the water clings to the outside and you just have a big clump in the middle that's all dry. It just turns into a raft. See, like, kind of like this one right here. Yeah. See how, like, that, the water is never going to get into the inside because it's gelling up on the outside. So that's where we just take, take it over it to, to the, the side. side. Have a talk with it. 
Can't be acting like this. And what happens is when you smush it, you break it open and allow the water to get into the stuff that got trapped when you made a big lump. So if you're looking here, you can see you probably poured a little bit too much in some areas and that's why I we have all of these big white lumps. Did I ruin it? No. We'll, we'll be able to get most of them out. You just spend a little bit of time. Yes. And try to break them up. All right. But if you don't get them all, don't worry about it because we are going to heat this solution up in a little while. This is that moment where you have to say to yourself, oh, this is time consuming and a little bit frustrating, but there's gummies on the other side of this. We're going to let this sit for five to 10 minutes to really have all of that gelatin no bloom. Heat. No heat. Make sure you don't heat it. When no you come stir. back, it's going to be a big gelatinous mess. <laughs> Don't rush this step. Okay. I'd rather you let it sit for 20 minutes and then come back. Go vacuum the house. Go, you know, do your nails. Change over the laundry. Do the laundry. You know, maybe make yourself a little dinner and then come back. It's not going to hurt it to let it bloom too long. It will hurt it if you under bloom it. Okay. So you have a big gelatinous mixture now and you can see how... Oof. It's like this. And we do have a bunch of lumps, but I'm not going to worry about them too much. Okay. Um... If we weren't doing this on camera, we probably would have been able to get most of them out. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn our heat to like medium. And what we're gonna do is melt the gelatin. But not boil it. We do not wanna bring this to a boil. Okay, so you can see how it's mostly a liquid now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the lid on for just like a minute. Now be careful here because you don't want it to boil. Right. And if we have it on there too long, it's gonna trap heat in. It's going to boil up and that's going to bring a lot of air bubbles. You're not going to be able to avoid all of the air bubbles. It ain't going to be perfect. But we're trying to minimize them. And then afterwards, we're going to scrape out as many as we can. If you get a few air bubbles in your gummies, it's okay. It just, they don't look as pretty. So we try to minimize them. Okay. Okay, so we are getting some bubbles, and what we're going to do is, we don't want to smash them, that's going to create more foam. Okay. So what we're going to do is, we're going to gently kind of stir. That helps keep them minimized. And now that everything is melted, we're going to add in the rest of our ingredients. I'm going to let you keep gently stirring. Again, don't whisk it. Okay. So what we're going to add in here is one serving of electrolytes. In, should no, I fold in the cheese? We're not folding anything in. Okay. One serving of electrolytes. We're gonna use some Redmond. Ooh. And we're going to allow that to completely mix in. What flavor? Uh, if I remember right, this was watermelon. I forgot, it was like five hours ago when I put it in there. <laughs> Any flavor will do though. We're also going to add in our potassium sorbate. Now, I don't remember if we talked about this before, so this is a food preservative, but again, this is, I have one tablespoon of that mixed with three tablespoons of water, but we're only adding in a quarter of a teaspoon. So this is gonna last you a long time and it will help prevent mold if you plan on having them for a long time, especially if you wanna make big batches at once. Right. This is also where you would add in your citric acid if you want an extra bite. So what do you the, mean by a bite? Like a sour kind of taste. Oh, like, okay. you know that you remember like sour patch yeah. kids, things like that. Here's the problem with citric that. acid. Citric acid draws moisture. Okay. So you don't want to have too much. There's already some in the Redmond and in the element. So you don't need it unless you want to have a little bit more of a sour taste, but don't go more than another quarter of a teaspoon because what I found is it actually begins to degrade the gummies from the inside. Oh my gracious. And if you want more flavor, we did learn the hard way, do not use more than one serving of the Element or the Redmond no. because they get really wet and they it's just- sweaty. They, they don't set upright and it's no. probably because uh, number one, the citric acid, number two, all of the sodium that's inside. They're sweaty bears. This is also where we're gonna add in a little bit of sweetener because we want them a little bit sweeter. We want it to be a treat. So what I'm gonna add in is 10 to 15 drops of liquid sucralose. Now you can also use liquid stevia. Start off with a quarter to a half a teaspoon of that. Then we can add in some additional flavoring. So I've got the watermelon in there. And again, this is completely optional. It all depends on what you're going for. If you're using unflavored electrolytes. Yeah, then you definitely want to add some in. So we've Never got, grape though. 
We've and I like great. We've got the Loran cotton candy. So I'm gonna put a quarter of a teaspoon in here. And this, the base for is Ooh. propylene glycol. I can smell it. I like it better than oils. Sometimes the oils don't want to mix in and you'd have to be using like a sunflower lecithin or something to help all of that oil. But you don't even in. need this if you don't want. You don't need to have it. It could be straight up electrolyte. The one thing about oil though is because we're using acacia fiber, that also acts in, as an emulsifier. So that would help mix in the oils. And then finally, if you want to have some food coloring, again, completely optional. We're gonna put in just like three drops of a red. Now, it's best to use the gel type. So there's right. a link in the recipe card. You can use the other kinds, but you're adding a lot more liquid. The gel goes a long way. And just use your imagination, whatever you want. I like having different colors. Now, if you wanna make a bunch of different flavors at one time, what you could actually do is divide this batch up and maybe have a couple of different flavors. Oh, For me, that's too much work. Yeah. I'd rather just make one flavor and then make another batch of a different flavor. So what we're gonna do is try not to stir it too hard. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this kind of simmer for about five minutes, not too long, but just enough to make sure all of the salts and everything, everything got dissolved. But I'm still watching it to make sure it doesn't boil. You do not want it to boil, which is one of the reasons why you want to continue to stir. I did forget to mention, if you aren't using electrolytes, this would have been the stage where you'd be adding in whatever your flavoring is, like, you know, Mio or something like that. You could have even started off with tea and yeah. done like two cups of tea. I like the electrolytes because I feel like these bears are really- They're doing something for they're you. They're caring for me. That's right. Also, very important, I should have mentioned this earlier, do not try to skip a step and add the electrolytes to the water before you put in the uh, gelatin and the acacia gum, especially because of the acacia gum, because of the salt that's in the electrolytes it makes it a lot more difficult to get that acacia gum to mix in without forming just globs of gum. Joe is speaking to me because my middle name is actually Skip a Step. We wanna to try to get rid of some of these air bubbles. So this is where our little strainer is gonna come in. Okay. And again, you're not gonna get them all. <laughs> and what we wanna do is just try to use our strainer and get some of the air bubbles. And what you're gonna see is they're actually forming like a skin across the top. Yeah. And that'll make it a little bit easier and just kind of like dump it on your plate. Okay, so now this is the part where time is of the essence. Okay. Because it's cooling. And as it's cooling, it's gonna make it much more difficult to, to pour. Use. So what we're gonna do is, and this pot isn't super hot. What we're gonna do is, again, I really like these. They come with these gummy molds. We're going to head, we're gonna go ahead and just pour this in here. Wow. And since I actually have two of them, I'll put one in the other one right away. Because this is what we're going to use to pour them into the mold. Yes, and let me have the spatula. Okay. And I try to get everything out. Now, if you're going to let this pot sit, which we are because I'd rather get the gummy bears poured, this is probably going to get stuck inside. Very easy to clean. Put hot water in it. Oh, okay. Okay, if you put hot water in there, or even if you fill it up with hot water and then go stick it on the stove for just a minute to get that water hot, right? it'll make it super easy to clean and you won't have to scrub and scrub and scrub. Thanks for the tip. Now, this is important. Get a flat surface to put your gummy molds on. Because otherwise, what's gonna happen is when you go to pick these up, they're gonna they spill. Shift. Now, these are like, I believe like one and a quarter inch gummy molds. And again, I don't like using the dropper because you get more air bubbles. Now we do have some air bubbles here on the top. So what we can use is that spoon Woo. to try to get some more of them off. But if you don't get them all off, don't worry about it. Go ahead and put that over there. And I'll just try to get these off. <laughs> I think that tastes good. And now what you're gonna do is find the bigger end. Right. And just carefully fill your mold, and I like to go all the way to the edge. No, 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 take your time one at a time. Okay. There you go. Now, if a little bit comes over the edge, that's okay, you can just use a spatula to put it in. You're better off underfilling it than overfilling it, and then oh. we can go back and kind of drop it in. And again, if you had air bubbles, 
Like you have right here, the first one or two should have them, but as you pour it out. Yeah, I can see them going away. You won't really have a lot of air bubbles. And I did learn, don't pre-spray these with oil. You see a lot of people on YouTube say pre-spray them with oil. I find you don't need to. I don't like that oil mixture it puts on the outside. And it works just as well. These silicone molds are awesome. I like overfilled. It's hard to tell if they're filled. Yeah. So what I like to do is kind of get down and you can kind of see this like one. a bunch of them that, and you're not gonna be able to see this on camera, that aren't filled all the way up. And I like to fill them all the way to the top. Now, the reason I like to fill them all the way to the top is because I find that the thicker the gummy bear, the better the texture. Yeah. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and you're gonna put them in the refrigerator, let them set for about an hour. You can speed this process up by putting them into the freezer okay. on a flat surface for about 15 minutes, but don't let them freeze. Okay. So you're better off, you can put them in the freezer, which is usually what we do, because I'm always in a hurry. Uh, we put them in the freezer for about 15 minutes, and then I pop one out and I check it. And if there's any residue on it, it's not set up then yet. it's not set. And then I move them into the refrigerator. Okay. You'll also notice they're starting to freeze if you have ones with air bubbles, like these couple, because the air bubbles will freeze first. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in the freezer. Now's the fun part. Through the magic of television. We have two trays of gummy bears that I actually made a little bit earlier. And again, you can see, it's almost impossible to avoid all of the air bubbles. We are going to take our mold. Okay. Very simple, turn it upside down and just pop all the gummies out. And they should come out very easily. And what I like about these silicone molds is you can see that all you do is press from the bottom and they all just pop There's out. There's just bears popping out. Gummy bears bouncing here and there and everywhere. Sorry. Saturday morning cartoons shape my life. So remember what I said earlier? What do you need to make this recipe? Patience. Time and patience. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to carefully stand all of these gummy bears up because uh -huh. again, we want as much exposed to the air as possible. Get in your merchandising. How would you want them set up if you were setting them up in, in a candy store so that they were super cute, nice presentation. This was a half filled one. It's very fun in your refrigerator, honestly, to open it up and just see legions of little Care Bears. Here's the thing, this is a fun thing to do with the kids and the grandkids. Absolutely. Right, it's, it's, it's really fun. Again, it seems like it's probably taking a long time because we're filming a video, right. but honestly, didn't take much. It takes like less than 25 minutes from start to finish to do everything. It just depends on like, you know, what exactly you're doing. And again, trying to film it makes it take a little bit longer because yeah. you're trying to do everything right. Now, if you have a drying rack, like a cookie cooling rack, you can do that as well. This is way funner though. It, I like using this little pan because I can just kind of put it in there. For head. And uh, here's one that actually was only a half fill. So these are ready to eat right now. Yeah. What we're gonna do though, is we're going to put these in the refrigerator right and you're here. gonna let them go 12 Perfect. to 48 hours. The longer that you let them sit in the refrigerator, and if you live in a really dry climate like Arizona or Utah, you could just put this on the counter, especially if you're during, during the winter. Yeah. But we're in Florida and it's humid in the house even with the air conditioner running and it's just much faster to just stick them into the refrigerator Again, they are shelf stable. They won't de develop a bunch of mold and mildew or anything like that, but they're ready now. You can see though, here's the texture of them after just like an hour or so. But as they sit, this one here, I'm gonna find a big thick one. Here's, a, this one here is a day old. And then we have, let's see. I think a blue one was even older. This one is about two days old. And you can see how this one really is nice and firm. Are you so proud of us that we have not eaten all of it in two days? Oh my gosh, they're so good. They're so good. So good. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in the refrigerator and then we're gonna come back with the nutrition on them. Okay, first thing I wanna do is show you how we store them. We put them in a mason jar and then I put a decedent packet in here and then go ahead and seal them up. If you live in a cold, dry climate, you can leave these on the counter. 
For us, we're gonna store them in the refrigerator because humidity is everywhere. Yes. Now, we're gonna go over the nutrition on these. Now, this nutrition is based on how you saw it made right here on this video. If you change things, if you use something different. You change it here too. Use more acacia fiber, use less acacia fiber, use Mio instead of electrolytes. That changes everything. So this batch was made with four tablespoons of acacia fiber. So I'm gonna give you three different ways. The first way is one gummy bear. Okay. So one gummy bear using these molds is about four calories, 19 grams of sodium, and 0.3 total carbohydrates, but 0.3 grams of dietary fiber. And again, read the articles down below on acacia fiber. I'm completely fine on deducting acacia fiber as opposed to things like soluble corn fiber. This is what I consider a serving. This is 10 gummy bears. I think that that is a pretty fair serving. Even for Rachel oh, on most They're bouncing days. everywhere. Okay. Here and there and everywhere. So if you want to have 10 of these gummy bears, 46.8 calories, 192 grams of sodium, three total carbohydrates, yep. three grams of dietary fiber. Now, let's take a look at this. This bag is a serving. That's a serving. Put those in my other hand. That's a serving. You actually get more here than you get here. We're going to save the these and do a review, except for this serving, 42 grams of total carbohydrates with 25 grams of dietary fiber. And then I believe there's some allulose in here. I don't even know how many net carbs because I don't see it written anywhere on well, here. Well, here's an interesting fact too, okay? So you've got 42 grams of total carbohydrates here. That's one of our gummies. Versus three total carbohydrates here. Here you have zero fat. Here you have zero fat. But over here, you have zero protein. Are you and ready? here, nine grams of protein. Nine grams of protein. Every gummy has 0.9 grams, basically a gram of protein. Yeah. Now, you want to get into the whole batch. You just saw us line that batch up on the sheet. And the entire batch, if you use those molds, you're going to get, depending on how you fill them up, roughly 60 gummy bears. 60. And these big gummy bears, not yeah. 60 of these little ones. Which, giants. I don't even know how many are in here. It's 51 grams. 281 calories if you eat the entire batch. The whole entire batch. Right? 60 gummies. Zero grams of fat. 55 grams of protein. Need a help getting your protein in? There you go. Without adding any fat. You're going to get 1,155 milligrams of sodium. Wow. So you're... Another great place to get your sodium. I don't have potassium on What's this What's the thing. total carbs though on a full, the full batch? 18 total carbohydrates. Total. And 18 grams of dietary fiber, making it zero net carbs. Wow. I think you've done it. Let us know down in the comment section if you make these. Let us know what your favorite flavor would be. Let us know if you make it and you change some flavorings up. Yeah. Like what other what flavors combos? would you add? Would you maybe mix a couple of different flavors like grape and lemon or cotton candy okay. and watermelon? Right. There's so many different things you can do. Again, links for everything are down below. All of the equipment we use, all the ingredients we use, and everything is listed on our website. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over there. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we make a recipe with care in it, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time, bye. bye.